Hello and welcome to Willoughby DIY. My name's Faith and today I'm going to be showing you how I make this beautiful fall porch decor using mostly Dollar Tree items. For a list of supplies, make sure you check that description box. Now let's get right into it. For this project, I used this placemat from the Dollar Tree. It's such a beautiful buffalo check pattern and it's got two pieces of fabric on it. So I just took a seam ripper and pulled that apart so it would be easier to work with and I could use that black piece of cloth for something else. I'm just pulling these hems open, removing any excess thread. I'm pulling the hems apart so I have more fabric to work with. You could see the orange of the pumpkin through the white parts of that fabric so I just gave one coat of white paint to one of my pumpkins. For my second pumpkin I used burlap fabric and I cut this just a bit bigger than the placemat. You could see the orange through it too. So I used burnt umber to cover that, just one coat. I let both of the pumpkins fully dry and I'm um, just going to cut a hole in the top using a craft knife. You see how I have those clips placed. Those are marking the very center of my fabric for me. I'm just going to put a little hot glue in the middle, place down my pumpkin. That way it doesn't move around from the center and I get everything on there nice and neatly. And I start covering it by gluing down the short edges. That way I know those are covering as much as they possibly can. And then we're going to go to our long sides and make sure we're pulling those nice and tight, gluing as we go. Once you have all the sides glued on, we're going to take the corners now. I kind of open them up like that so that it creates creates two creases instead of just the corner crease and then we're going to glue right inside that little crease there on each side to just fill that with hot glue and lay it down and you're going to repeat that on both sides and then we're going to glue the top part down flat so it's nice and tight at the top and then we'll be pushing all that excess fabric on the corner right down in that hole and we're just going to do that to all three of our other little corner pieces of fabric. And once it's all done, it should look a bit like this. It covered pretty well. And I'm just going to take some jute cord. This is totally optional, but I did add some cord to these to give them a little more texture. For this one, I'm using jute cord because I thought it would look better with the buffalo check. And I'm just gluing it down in the center and sort of just wrapping it around the pumpkin. And I'm making sure to put two strands on each fold and in between each fold and then I just glue it in the middle when I change direction and when I'm all done I put a nice healthy amount of glue in the middle at the top and just let that dry before adding this wood stem that I got from the Dollar Tree with some more hot glue if you don't have these just grab you a stick from outside cut the piece you need no big deal <laughs> And then I added some of this berry garland. I made it a curly cube by wrapping around a pencil. And then I just kind of stretched it out, pinched it and folded and pinched it in the middle so it would look like two curly cues instead of just one. And I'm going to hot glue that into a little gap underneath that stem. And then that's pretty much what you do for the burlap one as well. I created more folds on this one than the other one, but that's basically what you do. And I just used cotton, white cotton twine for this one instead and didn't double up on it. I just wrapped a single strand on the places I wanted them. And I secured that top with some more hot glue, added my stem and my berry garland curly cues, and that's it. I think the best part about these is they're super customizable. You can use any fabric you have on hand or pick up different fabric pieces at the Dollar Tree. They have there's a fabric that you can buy, felt, scarves, and plenty of placemats. So it's really up to you. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to leave that like. This project, you will need two of these baskets from the Dollar Tree. They're their hanging baskets and I removed their chains and they have these little loops where the chains hook onto and I needed to remove those from one of the baskets because they kept getting in the way when I was trying to put them together <laughs> but really just take some pliers and you pull it away from the main thing be careful because this will happen and then just bend it back and forth to remove it it'll break off pretty easy but it also can break pretty easy line it up as best you can um, my, the little spokes on mine weren't want to line up very good. And then I took some wire to bind these together, essentially. <laughs> now, I got this idea from Heidi Sample, and she was smart and used zip ties. I did not. 
you see here I'm just securing it together with some clips and I'm wrapping around with the wire and I wrap it four times in each little section just so it looks nice and you know symmetrical and purposeful like I said use some zip ties if you have them <laughs> the sad part is I have plenty of zip ties and I just was being very stubborn and wanted to use this wire instead <laughs> Heidi Sambal did an absolutely gorgeous job on hers, and when you're done with this video, maybe you could check hers out. Tell her I sent you, if you haven't seen her already. <laughs> when you get to the other end, um, all I did was just loop it through that little loop multiple times just to secure it. And for the top, I wanted to um, show you some other options other than a jar lid. You could use a wood round, some cardboard, but I did use this jar lid. And I started it out by just a little line of hot glue and then stick it on the top. And then I just took the hot glue and went crazy. I filled in all those gaps with hot glue. I probably used like two to three of those little mini glue sticks for this. But yeah, I think Heidi actually used zip ties and um, Cropodile to punch holes in her lid, which is a lot easier and faster. <laughs> And then we're going to spray paint it with uh, Rust-Oleum's Hammered Copper Spray Paint that I picked up in the clearance section in Walmart. But you do have to let it dry after you give the one coat so you can flip it over and paint the rest. And then I let it dry for a while before I added a second coat just to make sure I covered anything I might have missed. But this turned out really pretty. I love that color. It's gorgeous. I kind of like that spiraled wire around it. It's kind of nice. But I still think it's a lot easier to use the uh, zip ties and you can see so much of that hot glue it looks terrible but <laughs> we're gonna fix that don't worry and then I removed this paint so that my hot glue would stick and added some stems more of those wood stems from the Dollar Tree once again you could use sticks from outside that's perfectly fine and works just as well because we're covering it anyway so I stacked two of those up and off center to the side of the top of my lid I'm going to take this Dollar Tree burlap ribbon, cut some of it off just so it would be easier to work with, fold it in half long ways, and I'm going to start wrapping it around. And I just wanted to make a really cool, like, gnarled looking pumpkin stem. I don't know. I thought this would look cool, and it does. It really, I'm happy with how it turned out. But I took this, and I just wrapped it around and creased it where I needed to, folded it where I needed to just to keep that rounded shape, gluing as I went covering the stem and any part of the lid where I scraped the paint off. When I got to the end of this piece, I just took another piece and folded it and added it to there. It doesn't even matter because we're also going to come back in with some jute and wrap it around. So it'll kind of hide some imperfections and help you shape this better too. Once you get to the top of your wood pieces, your little stem pieces or stick if you're using a stick, I'm just taking the excess amounts of that ribbon and twisting it and tucking it into the previous piece of ribbon. I don't know if that makes sense, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I just twist it and tuck it and glue as I'm going to make a really cool looking stem. And we're making it thinner as we go. So we're tapering it, making it smaller and smaller until we get to the very end of our ribbon. Take your time and be careful so you don't burn yourself. I did get some hot glue on me a couple of times. Once you get to the end of this, we're just going to go in with some jute twine and I started by wrapping it around onto the basket itself around the base of the lid to try to hide some of that hot glue. So I'm just wrapping it over and under one spoke and then going to the next one over and under. And I'm going to wrap that around probably, I think I did it about six times. You could just do it till you like it or you could skip this step entirely. And without cutting the string, I went right up onto the lid, wrapped it around there once or twice, and then from there right onto the stem piece, wrapping up to the end, and then right back down and around, and then securing with some hot glue. And then I did take it and sort of border the edge of that burlap ribbon to make it look a little more finished, and attach it to my lid, and that was it. Then I just hit it with some fire so it doesn't look all scraggly. <laughs> Then you can embellish with some whatever you want, really. I use some burlap leaves and then a couple of leaves off of a Dollar Tree maple stem. Just hot glued them in there. Added some berry garland curly cues. I did two of these. One of them I folded in half, so there's two smaller ones. And then one I just left it big and long. And I think this turned out super nice.
Just like any DIY, this one can be done in so many different ways. That stem doesn't have to be burlap. It could be paper. You can even mold one out of clay if you wanted, or just use a bundle of sticks you find outside. Possibilities are endless. You will need three of these signs from the Dollar Tree and we're going to prep them by removing their hangers and those staples in the back as well as these embellishments. If you want, you can scrape off that glitter. I did. We won't talk about that, but I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> we're going to put two of these together with these huge popsicle sticks. We're going to hot glue them on and then staple to just for extra security. <laughs> And then we're going to take that third sign and we're going to measure it two pieces of it the same width as these two signs together. We're going to cut those apart. You'll have two pieces of this as well as a teensy little sliver left over. Cut that off. We're going to sand those edges, make sure they're nice and smooth. And we're going to connect these to the top and bottom of our signs to each end. So I just cut these large craft sticks in half and I'm going to glue one in the middle here, just like you see me doing, and one on each side. And then we're going to hit them with some staples. And these did go through my sign just a tad. That's why you see me kind of holding it up off my table so I don't punch more holes in my table. But I just put some staples in the middle to kind of hold that sh short sign to the longer signs. And then I put a staple in each end of the sticks. And we're going to repeat that with our other piece on the other end. And then I use some spackling from the Dollar Tree, that lightweight spackling they have, to kind of fill in these creases because I want it to look kind of like one solid piece. And, um, I mean, it worked pretty good. I don't know that this was necessary, but I did it. <laughs> you could probably cover it with paint. I'm using chalk paint, so I don't know why I thought this was necessary. But I did let it dry and then sand it smooth and give it two coats of Rust-Oleum's linen white chalk paint. Once my paint was completely dry. My second coat of paint was completely dry. I painted the edges too. Um, I'm going to take a ruler and a pencil and mark lines across this sign every three inches or so. And I did smudge the pencil with my finger because I was going to go with a shiplap look at first, but I paint it, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I found a couple cute fonts, which I'll link down below for you, and printed them out. Printed out the words, Happy Fall, y'all. And I'm going to transfer them on very old school because I still don't have carbon paper <laughs> or a Cricut. So I just cut out my words and letters, color the back with pencil, tape it to where I want it on my surface, trace over it with a pencil, and that's it. If you have a Cricut, you will make very short work of this project. Once all of my words and letters are transferred onto my sign, you can paint if, if you're doing it this way. If you have a Cricut, you're pretty much done at this point. But I took this Harvest Orange and painted over Happy and Y'all. And it wasn't as opaque as I wanted it to be, so I had to do a second coat of it. And you could still kind of see the pencil marks through it. But I kind of like how that looked. I didn't at first, but I do kind of like it. Gives it, it gives it a bit more dimension, so I like how that turned out in the end. Once you have happy and fall painted, you can let those dry and then move on to fall. And I used English ivy green for the word, the letters in fall. And I was really just following exactly what I transferred on there, but it didn't quite look right. So I thickened these up quite a lot and it looked so much better. Once my letters were dry, I distressed my sign by using some warm buff all over the sign, even on top of the letters, very lightly. Then I used territorial beige in, on top of the lines and a little here and there, wherever I felt like it needed to go. And then for the lines, I felt they needed to be darker. So I used burnt umber and a thin liner brush to just paint over that line and smudge with my finger here and there. And I did it lightly over the letters as well. That way it would look kind of like the letters were painted onto this wood piece. I also put some lines on the side so I keep looking like a board's put together. <laughs> Once that was all done, I took the burnt umber and just dry brushed that on to the sign as well. Just concentrating mostly on the edges of the board.
While I was making this sign, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it. Um, I nearly scrapped it for the video and just quit. But I pushed through, and in the end, I really like how it turned out. I think it's very beautiful and rustic and looks so much better than I thought it was going to. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave that like. It helps out my channel and this video so very much. And if you haven't already and you want to see more content from me, don't forget to subscribe. Tap that notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. If you want, come follow me over on Instagram and Pinterest. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys next time.